Florida's coast next. Let's get you caught up with the very latest on what's going on with Hurricane Dorian. Local mandatory evacuations start at 8 a.m. in parts of St. John's, Duval, and Nassau counties. We'll explain how to check to see if your family is included in that evacuation order. Also, families with no place to go can report to local shelters this morning. You can find a list and opening times on actionnewsjacks.com. And all beaches in Duval County are closed until further notice. Beaches in Nassau and St. John's counties are not also allowing vehicles on them. Action News Jax is working around the clock to help you get prepared for the storm. We start our team coverage right now with Action News Jax. First alert, meteorologist Garrett Beatonball with the very latest. It's Labor Day. Folks wanted to go out to the beach, but it is closed, and you're going to show us why. Yeah, you can see right now, we use computer number one behind us, guys, by the way, and you can see uh, here is uh, what we're watching for your Labor Day is the Category 5 hurricane right now churning over the northern Bahamas. And unfortunately, we're going to have to continue our storm preps, especially along the immediate coast, because this is still forecast to be off our coastline as we head into Wednesday, approaching from the south and southeast. So you can see here as we go through uh, the zoomed in look here from the infrared satellite imagery, there's that just daunting eye and eye wall pounding the Grand Bahama Island area. And still, the Abacos are still getting some heavy rain and wind, though the core. The strongest winds are now away. Here is the latest forecast track as of 5 a.m. This is a 6 a.m. position update from the National Hurricane Center. You can see the latest coordinates there. So we'll begin to get these uh, updates here right now. You can see. And it's the reason to take note. Jacksonville's mayor is stressing now is the time for Florida to prepare. We are one city, we are one Jacksonville, and we will get through this. And at this hour, mandatory evacuation orders are out for certain zones in Duval, St. John's, and Nassau counties. Welcome to Action News Jacks at Noon. I'm Don Lopez. And I'm Phil Amato. Let's you get caught up with the very latest now. Hurricane Dorian is now just over 300 miles away from Jacksonville. That storm is moving at just one mile an hour with 155 mile an hour winds. Our coastal southeast Georgia counties are now under a hurricane and storm surge watch along with coastal northeast Florida. Action News Jax has live team coverage on Dorian's path for you, the threat for local families, and what you can do now to prepare. But we begin with Action News Jax first alert meteorologist Garrett Biedenbaugh with the changes from the newest advisory, Garrett. And you can see we have the a noon position update as well since it's near land. Right now it's moving to the west-northwest. So it started that critical west-northwest movement now that was to the west at 11 a.m. Now it's to the west-northwest. And you can really see it with the infrared satellite imagery. 155 miles per hour with maximum sustained winds. Pressure up to 922 millibars. Uh, some upwelling going on. Cooler water uh, coming up from the bottom of the ocean there with all the sloshing around with these intense waves and storm surge from the winds. You can see still, though, interacting with Grand Bahama Island for hours and likely still to do so as it's only inching away at one mile per hour. You can see there the uh, significant impacts are going to continue. Here's the latest 11 a.m. forecast track for the National Hurricane Center. Our next track comes by 5 p.m. and Chief Meteorologist Mike Burris will be bringing that for you. Uh, you can see just to the south and east of Jacksonville's latitude by Wednesday in the morning and then uh, coming up to our area about due east of Jacksonville Beach by about 70 to 80 miles with the current forecast by Wednesday through the afternoon and early evening. And of course, we are still with our immediate coastline in that western edge of the cone of uncertainty, that forecast error that could be there. And so every mile it is closer to us is an increase of significant local impacts that could occur, especially our, at our immediate coast. Then it's off to the north and east through Thursday morning. So what has changed since this morning? It's now Category 5 or Category 4, excuse me, uh, hurricane with 155 mile per hour winds. Uh, still forecast to be a Category 3, 70 to 80 miles east of Jacksonville on Wednesday evening. So here's that tropical wind timeline for you. You can see here from Jacksonville down through St. Augustine. St. Augustine, you'll likely see the winds start first at the immediate coastline Tuesday afternoon or early evening, and that extends through about Thursday in the morning. Hurricane watches now extend up through coastal southeast Georgia as well, and also storm surge watches have been extended up to the Savannah River uh, from the uh, Florida Georgia border areas to the north. Four to six feet of potentially hazardous and, and dangerous storm surge, uh, and that's on top of the waves of 15 to 20 foot uh, waves with the breakers. There's uh, there it is, a Dorian continuing to stream off on first alert Doppler HD with the spaghetti plots not showing much room for error for Hurricane Dorian. I'm coming up and showing you the latest local impacts and going neighborhood by 
neighborhood with potential storm surge impacts as well. That's in your first alert. Seven day forecast. Local evacuation orders got underway today at eight this morning. That means hundreds of thousands of people should be on their way to safer areas now. In Duval County, if you live in the red or orange areas, you need to get out. That's near the St. Johns River, our coastal communities, and the areas along the Duval County, Nassau County line. And this map highlights the mandatory evacuation zones in St. Johns County. Meanwhile, in Nassau County, people living in the areas of red, orange, and blue need to get out. And then families living in Jacksonville Beach, Neptune Beach, Atlantic Beach, you will be under a curfew starting tonight at 10, and that curfew will be lifted each morning at 6 until further notice. Now, right now, as the storm nears us, people up and down our local coastline are preparing for Hurricane Dorian. Action News Jack's Danny Bazzini kicks off our team coverage now live in Davis Shores, and that's where homeowners are boarding up their houses as we speak, Danny. That's exactly right. We're here in Davis Shores where people are prepping for Hurricane Dorian. If you just take a look behind me, you can see this one homeowner, homeowner has put up plywood, three inch plywood to his garage doors. He's planning on doing the same thing to his front doors. Now, he tells me this is actually the first time he's done something like this. And that's because during Hurricane Irma and Matthew, he didn't do any of this. He didn't prep. He thought it wasn't going to be too bad. And he actually ended up getting 11 inches of floodwaters in his house and he had to completely redo everything. And so this time he says he's not taking any chances. But one thing that is important to add is that St. John's County is under mandatory evacuations for zones A and B. But neighbors I speak to say that they're planning on sticking it out. Reporting in Davis Shores, Danny Bozzini, uh, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. And St. John's County issued mandatory evacuations for zones A, B, Hastings, and Flagler Estates. We pick up our team coverage right now with Action News Jack's Elizabeth Pace. Elizabeth, dozens of people are now in storm shelters. School employees told me that 14 people are inside Timberland Creek Elementary School behind me. It's one of two pet friendly shelters here in St. John's County. Another woman just walked past me. Down this hall here, all the way to those double doors, you'll notice the more faculty in there ready to accept more people who might need shelter. But now let's pull up a map we made of all the six different grade schools in St. John's County that are now storm shelters. Now we stopped by Osceola Elementary School this morning, and within the first 30 minutes, at least four families showed up. When I walked inside, employees told me that they're putting everyone in the cafeteria. They're asking people to bring cots, blankets, and pillows. We're not allowed to shoot inside because of privacy reasons, but some parents say that they're bringing their children in now so they don't risk any danger later. Anything scary to do with you know a storm of this magnitude? It's it's crazy what the Bahamas are going through right now. Now, if you need a shelter that's pet friendly or accommodate special needs, you need to look it up beforehand. We actually put the entire list on actionnewsjacks.com. And coming up at five, we'll show you what some businesses in St. Johns County are doing to help prepare for the storms. Reporting live in St. Johns County, Elizabeth Pace, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jacks. Now, what about school? Well, parents, take a look at this key that we've put together for you. As of today, all nine local school districts in Northeast Florida are closed, as well as Glen Camden, Charlton Counties as well, and they are listed right here in red on our map. And most of these districts will also be closed on Wednesday. Every district except for Union and Glen County schools are expected to reopen by Thursday. For more information on our local colleges, we have it listed for you at actionnewsjacks.com. Live look at Jacksonville Beach right now, where mandatory evacuation orders are in effect, but you can see more than a few people walking the beach on this Labor Day. Action News Jack's Christy Turner picks up our live team coverage in Jack's Beach. And Christy, you've seen businesses also boarding up there. This would normally be a busy holiday weekend at the beaches, but you can see a business along the boardwalk already boarded up. A major concern with Hurricane Dorian is how are the sand dunes going to hold up? We saw sand being brought in at certain beach access points to act as a barrier. And if we swing over this way on the pier, you can see the double red flag is flying, warning people to stay out of the water because of dangerous rip currents. The beach is closed, but if we swing over to the ocean, you can see it's not stopping surfers from taking advantages of uh, advantage of these waves. I'd say they're about four to five feet normally. It's pretty flat out here in Jack's Beach. I spoke with one surfer who says the waves are definitely already really rough. 
pretty hairy. It's pretty heavy. Uh, I wouldn't be out there if I didn't know how to swim. If I was a non-swimmer, a non-water sports person, I wouldn't go near it. I drowned in a heartbeat. And Jack's Beach lifeguards removed the lifeguard stations. It's just too dangerous to respond to emergencies in the water. You can see a large crowd out here watching those surfers in the water, but I would not advise anyone to get in the water anytime soon until this storm passes because it is already really rough. Reporting live in Jacksonville Beach, Christy Turner, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News, Jax. See most of those people staying on the sand, though, this new. A local family spent the morning preparing their homes and packing their bags as Hurricane Dorian inches toward the Florida coast. Action News, Jax, Beth Russo joins our live Team coverage right now from Fernandina Beach, and that's where Beth, right now, there are so many people making their way off the island. And this is what houses up and down Fernandina Beach are starting to look like. If you go ahead and look right above us, you can see the double red flag flying. That is because the beaches here are closed. Right now, I want to show you some video of families prepping their homes in mandatory evacuation zones. Now, the evacuations are in place for zones A, C, and F here in Nassau County. That includes the downtown area where we've just a little while ago seen sandbags set up outside a number of shops. Two shelters are open at Hilliard and Callahan Middle Schools. The families we've been talking to say they aren't going there, but they definitely are getting off the island. Your choice of being stuck here and not having power or stuck, you know, on the other side, but safe. <laughs> I have talked to families here today that tell me they're staying on the island and they have some very specific reasoning. I'll tell you why coming up all new on Action News Jax at 5. We're live in Fernandina Beach, Beth Russo, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. We have gotten so many calls and so many of your emails. It is important to know your evacuation zone and we're here to help. Our team coverage continues with Letitia Barriola showing you how to find out. It's important to know what your evacuation zone is. We've made it really easy to find your evacuation zone. It's something everyone should know or find out now that those mandatory evacuation orders are in place. So first, just go to actionnewsjacks.com, the hurricane page, and you're going to see something that looks like this, okay? You want to scroll down till you get to where you see find your address or place there. I'll kind of zoom in, and you'll start to see some of the colors there. Now, I want to take this a bit closer here so you can see exactly what it looks like. So this is the Atlantic Beach City Hall address. It's 800 Seminole Road. You see it right there in the orange. That means it is in a mandatory evacuation zone. You see how it's close to the red there. Those are both evacuation zones. Now let's put in the address. There's the Duval County City Hall. That's on West Duval Street. This is clearly in the yellow. That is not an evacuation zone there, okay? But you see how it's close to the orange orange and the red, those are the mandatory evacuation zones. So it's really easy. If you type in your address, it'll zoom in, take you all the way there. Those are two examples of what it looks like when you are in a zone and a mandatory evacuation zone and when you are not. Go to actionnewsjacks.com to see where you are, either zone A or zone B. That's what you're looking for in Duval County. In the studio, Letitia Barriola, Action News Jax. And from the Action News Jacks First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Garrett Biedenbaugh timing out when Dorian begins to be felt here across northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. The specific impacts you can expect in your neighborhood. That's coming up in the Action News Jacks First Alert seven day forecast. What to watch brought to you by Ashley Home Store. You can feel it when a storm is coming. And when you need to know if it's headed your way, we're here. Action News Jax and the First Alert Weather Team, rated the most accurate for the last 13 years. Tracking storms live so you know exactly how and when to prepare. Put your trust in Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. Here, here, and here. Action News Jax, First Alert Weather. We're here for severe. Florida hit by hurricanes three years in a row. Matthew, Irma, 
Michael. Now you can be prepared with the 2019 Action News Jack's Hurricane Survival Guide. Hurricane proof your home. Get the latest evacuation routes and life saving items you need to have on hand. The 2019 Action News Jack's Hurricane Survival Guide. It's the best way to protect your family before, during, and after a hurricane. Download your copy at actionnewsjacks.com today. Sponsored by Public Supermarkets. If Arby's had to use one word to describe the new bourbon barbecue sandwiches, it would be, hmm, oh, got it, savory, smoky, sweet. Arby's, we have the meat. We created a cancer specialist in North Florida to be a size that we feel is the perfect size to treat cancer. It is large enough that we can offer a wide variety of cancer treatments and state-of-the-art treatments, but yet small enough and in the community where when you walk through the door, we know your name and you feel welcome. As opposed to large corporations, Cancer Specialist is run by doctors who put each patient's needs first. Cancer Specialist in North Florida. Cancer doesn't care, we do. I'm Johnny Manziel, ex-pro football player and direct auto insurance spokesperson. I know what it's like to not know where your next paycheck is coming from. I also know that Direct Auto will work with you no matter what your situation. I found a home at Direct, and you can too. Hey, uh, Johnny Football, how much longer are you gonna be using my office? Probably a couple more minutes, but I got time to hang. Okay, cool. Get Direct and get going. Save up to 25%. Name one other restaurant that makes their barbecue with brown sugar bacon and sauce with Kentucky bourbon that's been aged in charred oak barrels. Charred oak barrels, people. And we have a drive-thru. Arby's, we have the meat. The First Alert 7-Day Forecast. On air, online, and on the go. Brought to you by ViStar. If you believe that having a live help call center that's open every day of the week is better, join ViStar. Action News Jax continues to track Hurricane Dorian 24-7. We're also monitoring the Bahamas. Now, this is some video that was sent to me by an Action News Jax viewer just over the last half an hour, 45 minutes. Can you see this video from Freeport where you can see this home where you have floodwaters reaching for the roof at this point? Today, Florida's governor is urging Florida to get prepared. Hurricane Dorian has uh, shown what it's capable of. It's absolutely battered uh, the Bahamas. Uh, people need to remain vigilant. If you're ordered to evacuate, um, uh, you need to do that. Now take a look at this video here from the Hurricane Hunters. It's dark, but suddenly you can see that lightning flashing from Dorian. There it is from outside the plane's window. We've slowed the video down for you, too, so you can get a better look at the power of this hurricane. Believable. Now certified Jacksonville's most accurate weather forecast. Action News Jack's first alert weather. I'm first alert. Meteorologist Gary Beaton. Well, you can see now moving to the west-northwest. That's a crucial point of the forecast now with that movement beginning to feel a little bit of a weakness in a ridge with Category 4 Hurricane Dorian. Winds of 155 miles per hour with minute-by-minute -minute satellite updates. We'll have your first alert seven-day forecast coming up with more details. But now we want to go straight to uh, Jacksonville's uh, Sheriff Mike Williams for an update on storm prep. Sheriff, uh, what is the status right now of JSO staffing levels? Are you guys kind of prepared for this? What, where are we at right now? You just briefed the city council? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start uh, the additional resources on the street tomorrow during the day. They will ramp up through tomorrow night. You know, we'll add additional resources as, as time goes by. Uh, we'll have to wind up putting people on the bridges to close the bridges at some point. And then we've got obviously some other uh, contingencies that we you know, build manpower uh, plans into. So you know we're we're uh, we're ready and like everybody else, just watching the uh, the forecast and and we'll uh, you know put things in place we need it. And your department just put out a note to us that the bridges once they're closed, they're closed for the entirety of the storm. Is that something that kind of people need to be aware of? How Abs this works? Absolutely. So we we anticipate once those winds. Reach, remember that it's 40 mile an hour sustained. It's not a time, but when the winds per bridge, so we won't close them all at one time, they'll be closed based on the wind speed on that particular bridge. When it reaches 40 mile an hour sustained winds, we'll close that bridge. 
Uh, we don't anticipate being able to open that bridge up. We don't anticipate those winds uh, subsiding until the event is really over. Uh, best guess in terms of the timetable, we talked about it in here. Uh, tomorrow evening at some point, we expect we may see that. Uh, but we'll be very clear in announcing and messaging you know, that, hey, we're going up to monitor the bridges and that type of thing. So uh, we'll give everybody as much advance warning as we can. But again, we're talking about the weather. Uh, and as soon as we hit 40 mile an hour sustained winds on the bridges, uh, we will close that particular as bridge. As far as 911 services, when should people be calling? When should, is the non-emergency line still open? I mean, what are the options there? Yeah, both help? lines are still open. So 911, 630, 500 are still open. They will be open uh, and operating for the entire duration of the event. So that's not going to change. Uh, the only caveat, and we talked about this yesterday, is at some point in time during the storm, uh, we may be in a position uh, because of storm conditions that we may not be able to respond. It may not be safe for the first responders. Uh, as much as they may try to, uh, they may not be able to get to certain areas. So if you're in that evacuation A and B and you choose to stay in those areas, then you, you've kind of put yourself at risk of not being able to you know, receive that assistance from first responders if the time comes. So um, now again, that's something that we monitor and we push that envelope as far as we can. Uh, but we've seen in the past two storms that there is a window where we pull everybody in and we just wait for the worst of the worst to go by and then we kind of get back out and get back to work so we'll do the same in this in this storm as well and sure if you have uh, mandatory evacuations for zones a and b about how many people is that that's about 150,000 people give or take uh, and so again for us that impacts traffic obviously impacts shelter locations that type of thing so uh, the eoc the city's done a good job of preparing and again we've you know we the storm has moved so slow we've been working on this since the middle of week early early really last week and so everything's in place and we're and we're ready to go so we continue to monitor that traffic from south florida as well you know we're able to uh, at the tpo watch real-time traffic all the way uh, actual traffic counts all the way from south florida all the way up so we've got a pretty good idea what the flow will look like we will see something before it hits us basically uh, we'll know there's going to be a traffic jam or there could be a traffic jam before there is one uh, and that helps us kind of divert and, and reroute that to alleviate as much as we can so we'll continue to monitor all of that uh, over this you know next 24 hours sheriff i don't know if you know off the top of your head for registered sex offenders for shelters what are the options? What's supposed to happen with that? So that particular population, uh, based on their conditions, they, they are familiar with what they're supposed to do. So starting last week, uh, uh, our unit, offender tracking unit, the Department of Corrections has been reminding them of their requirements. The Legends Center is the shelter that we use. Uh, they are segregated. They have to check in and they are segregated from the general population uh, part of the shelter. Uh, there's additional law enforcement resources there as well, uh, and we've used that last couple of uh, you know last couple of um, uh, storms. So that's the that's the uh, the posture today as well. As we Sheriff, sure. uh, a viewer shared a picture of a uh, picture with us of some guys out on the beach getting sand from the beach. So what are the consequences behind that? Yeah, you know uh, uh, the beaches law enforcement agencies and beaches government are discouraging that. Uh, I believe it's against the law. They're going to be enforcing that. Uh, so, yeah, we would we would obviously discourage it as well. But uh, they should know that they're going to have some resources out there monitoring that to make sure that doesn't happen. And are you evacuating any detention centers, jails in uh, zones A and B? Uh, we are not. We are not. So we make we make different considerations for uh, some of that based on, and we have plans in place should we have to to uh, you know take additional steps. But we are uh, in good shape right now. And can you elaborate what those plans would be? So on the most extreme cases, you would, you would have to evacuate a jail. So for us, we're unique in that we have a nine-story jail, and so we move people up. A lot of that's already happened. Uh, we closed the, uh, the community transition center downtown, which is really impacted by flooding. We closed that a couple of days ago. Uh, some of those people have been moved to the farm. Some have been moved to uh, the jail. And some have, based on release dates, if they've got a release date that's coming up in the next couple of days, work with the judges, go ahead and get that release date uh, executed so they can leave. And so work it, we've been doing that again for about a week to make sure that we're managing that population. Too. As far as general uh, JSO calls not related to the storm, crime happens at my home or, or something like that, what can people expect? Are you still able to respond to that? Will response times be slower? Uh, no. So we have, at, yes, we're able to respond. Uh, nothing will change. So uh, response times will not be slower. So we have our 
Uh, if there was no storm today, we have X number of officers on the street, you know, based on the time of day. That doesn't change. So we don't pull any on-duty resources away from their duties to address storm duties. We're bringing in additional resources, people who are off today. So we've mandated people work. Uh, they will begin that tomorrow, and then they'll do storm-related calls for service. So things like the down power line, the street we have to block because of potential flooding, whatever those things are, uh, and there's a variety of those things, as you can imagine. Uh, those will be directed to the storm units. They'll take care of that. Uh, the officers on the street will still be available for uh, calls for service. Jen Watt, our station, is asking the question about people who evacuate maybe from the beach and need to get back to their homes. Will they be allowed back in their homes? Will JSO prevent that? What happens in that dynamic? So when the beaches is evacuated, uh, when they, you know, the storm passes, uh, we'll have uh, damage assessment teams come in, so they'll look at the electrical system, the water system, and once it's safe for the community to go back into the beaches, and again, this is part of the discussion that we ongoingly have with the beaches communities, uh, then we'll open the bridges and the beaches will be open, uh, you know, all at one time. So but they can't come and go freely if, is that just contingent on the, the we, bridges? Oh, so after, prior, like during the, like during yeah, the event, after, if they yeah. want to get to their home. So we discourage that. Yeah, no one's going to be there to stop you from doing that. We're not going to put resources out to do that or to check IDs, but we discourage you. If you've evacuated, stay evacuated. We, we encourage you not to come and go. And Sheriff, do you have any plans in place for people who are found looting? Oh, absolutely. And we always have resources out to monitor that and make sure that, you know, we're not having uh, looters. And again, we haven't done the, the, the level of evacuation where we would expect that, but we closely coordinate with the beaches really at this time. That's where most of the evacuations really have taken place to make sure they have enough resources. We've, we've helped support them uh, so they can patrol aggressively and make sure you don't have those issues develop. Sheriff, Sheriff Mike Williams, thank you for your time. So yeah, that, thank that you. is the status Thanks. here at City Hall. The sheriff just wrapping up as well as other and here we are here, thanks to uh, Sheriff Mike Williams for uh, giving us that update about Hurricane Dorian. To continue with what you can expect here locally from weather standpoint, you can see moving to the west-northwest at one mile per hour right now, continuing to track this major hurricane, Category 4 hurricane right now. This is the latest forecast track. As of 11 a.m., we'll get our next track at 5 p.m. east of Jacksonville's latitude by Wednesday afternoon and into the evening, as likely still the Category 3 hurricane is what the latest forecast is and you can see probably on a little bit of a weakening phase, but it was still uh, a strong cat two or a cat three is what we're watching for. And 50 to 70 and even 80 miles offshore is kind of the range we're looking at uh, right now. And if that wobbles to the left or the, the track shifts to the left or to the west, uh, that would increase our potential impacts here locally in northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. So what to expect? Coastal wind, 40 to 60 plus miles per hour. Storm surge as high as four to six feet. And then you add the waves on top of that and the wave run up and wave overwash over some of the dunes or any of the breaks in the dunes. And that's when you get those, those uh, amounts of water going into some of our streets right along the immediate coast. We're talking, for example, Jacksonville Beach, 1st, 2nd Street, potential there, maybe even as far west as 3rd Street. Heavy showers and thunderstorms about six to eight plus inches along the immediate coast. So at the coastal communities, again, storm surge is one of the things we're watching for and especially potential for destructive waves uh, running up and starting as early as Tuesday for St. John's County and for you in Flagler County, you can still watch us there over the antenna in Flagler County. We could even see that before the onset of the tropical storm force winds as these swells continue to make their way off to the north and west away from Dorian. Now here for our local impact for inland communities from Blackshear to Waycross and Ahunta, Folkestone down to Sanderson, Lake City, Lake Butler, Stark, and Palatka. You can see winds of 10 to 20 plus miles per hour. And right along the St. John's River Basin, those winds may be up just a bit and rainfall one to two inches. And we'll be seeing some potential for the river and creek flooding as well, depending on how much uh, we get. Now, generally speaking, we'll see some of the estuaries and low lying areas could see storm surge as great as three plus feet. Uh, and then again, on the immediate coast, could see that four to six feet. Coming up, tonight at 5. Uh, we'll detail those um, in neighborhood by neighborhood. Here's the hour by hour forecast. Some rain bands potentially as early as Tuesday, early morning into the mid afternoon. That we'll have to watch out for. A, a rotating cell could get an isolated tornado or water spout. And then you can see all of that moisture with the center staying just offshore. This is a crucial point of the forecast. How close Dorian does get to the west. And you can see now this our in-house computer model keeping it just offshore. But still the waves are going to be a big issue. They're already at 14 feet on that buoy well to our south and east, already between 6 and 7 feet 
just offshore with waves along and surf along the immediate coast here today at four to six feet. Our next advisory is at 2 p.m. from the National Hurricane Center. Your Action News Jacks first alert, seven day forecast with your weekend always in view. Some scattered showers today, onshore winds, not from Dorian, by the way. Mid to upper 80s and those increasing winds and surf by Tuesday. Dorian here is here on Wednesday. West of I-95, not much rain, especially the I-75 corridor. And then sunny and hot on Thursday in the mid 90s, low 90s for Friday, and partly sunny for a good start to the weekend on Saturday. And a few showers and storms for Sunday, and it's the first Jags home game. You can always get this forecast any time of the day. Get updated alerts for us by downloading the free Action News Jacks First Alert weather app and join Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish tonight on CBS 47 and Fox 30 Action News Jacks. It's something many people do to protect their home during a storm, but it could actually do more harm than good. Tonight at 5, why experts say you shouldn't tape your windows during a hurricane. Once again, that's tonight at 5 o'clock. Well, thanks for joining us for Action News Jacks at noon. We'll have much more tonight at 5. Young and the Restless is on next, but keep it locked right here for updates every hour. South Window is Florida's factory direct window company. We manufacture, we install, and we guarantee for life. <laughs> We stand behind our work on both our products and installation. One company, one call. This Saturday only, save 40% off factory direct windows and doors. Bring in your measurements for on the spot pricing. Nothing brings us together quite like breakfast at McDonald's.